Yo, what's going on then, guys? It's your boy Ben Gregson or Dilemma here. So, last night I played in the Monday Night Melee uh, Swiss tournament on Dueling Book. I went 3 and 1 with Vernasilth, Notoria, 60 card um, thing, <laughs> is the best way to describe it. Um, so, I wanted to play Notoria, but like the deck can't play as many going second cards as I want it to. Um, so, I simply just made the deck 60. Um, the deck's actually really strong, and post Magnificent Mavens, we obviously get the uh, the, the the cards, uh, the Ashizu cards, which even makes this deck better, right? Um, so I'll go over the card by card and explain some of the stuff that's going on. So we're playing three Chameleon, three Mole Cricket. These are your two starters. Um, you essentially go summon Mole Cricket, Mole Cricket summon Camellia, Camellia sends the trap, the trap adds the spell, and then you activate the spell summoning Mole Cricket. And then your opponent's turn, you can mole crook it and shoot out any of the um, the other effects in the deck. So we have Horn Needle, which is when your opponent special summons a monster, tribute a Notori monster, and then pop the monster they special. Uh, with Camellia, all of your tribute effects become nil two for cost instead of tributing, which makes these cards insane. So we have Horn Needle, uh, Butterfly mills a card to stop your opponent from running over your guys um, because these guys are weenies, so you want to protect them. Uh, one Antjor, Antjor tutors out all of the level 3 Notorio effects, so if your hand's like really bad and you just open like Camellia, um, you can go Camellia, send Sacred Tree, uh, sorry, Camellia, send Antjor, and then in your opponent's turn, when your opponent normal summons, you can summon the Antjor, and then Antjor can shoot route your effects anyway, so Antjor's really strong. Uh, one Rose Whip, honestly I think this is the most powerful card, um, Rose Whip came up in moderation, it works the same way as Winda, where if you're able to summon the Rose Whip in response to a spell card, because the Rose Whip sees the spell card activation, um, your opponent can't activate spells for the rest of the turn. Um, so you can like Camellia summon Mole Cricket and then activate Mole Cricket in response to a spell to summon your Rose Whip out of the deck to lock them out of spell cards. Um, which in theory is really good going first because you can like protect your board, but you can also protect your board with Notoria Vine, uh, which is a non once per turn spell and trap negate. Um, this card is obviously quite bad because you have the tribute cards for it. But now because of Camellia, that's not an issue. And then Sunflower is the same as Vine, but for monster effects. And then you have Triple Blessing. I was playing this card at 2 for a very long time, but because I'm playing 60, I wanted the third copy. And then Triple Sacred Tree. You send this off Camellia, you send this off Goods, and it actually has a good on-field effect. You can also send off of like droplets of super poly so you don't go super neg as well, which is really good. Um, and then onto the going second cards, which are three Fenrir and three Kamungus. These are tutorables through Small World. Um, and they're also Earth, which means you're not locked under the restrictions of the Vernisil monsters, which say you can only activate Earth monster effects the turn you use them. Um, Kamungus was really good throughout the event, and Fenrir was absolutely absurd. This card is so ban worthy. It is unreal how strong this card is. Like, Dark Moon Blast was warped by, you know, the bestial cards and stuff, but Fenrir has been absolutely disgusting. Uh, triple Super Poly, I sacked a couple of people by drawing this for turn as my sixth card. Uh, Super Poly is insane. You can also, like, because we're playing Frost, we have technically a higher chance of seeing Super Poly turn one, and also it's a trap card. Uh, same with Forbidden Droplets, this is really good at breaking boards, and also it's technically a trap card. Uh, triple Ash. Uh, triple Imperm, Bell, and Harpy's Feather Duster is our last game second cards. Bell's a bridge to get you through everything. Uh, triple Prosperity to dig. And then we're playing Triple Vernacil for the Awakening Forests. So what Awakening Forest does is you discard it from your hand as well as another Earth to send an Earth from your deck to the grave, and then you reborn. So Vernacil for the Awakening Forest is essentially another starter because you can discard it and any Earth monster to send Mole Cricket, and then, act and then summon back the Mole Cricket, activate the Mole Cricket, get the Rescue Rabbit effect, and continue on. Um, Vernisilf the Misting Seedlings is also just another Vernisilf name. So all the Vernisilf names were essentially Monster Reborn. Um, and this one adds another Vernisilf from your deck to your hand. So this will add this, and then this can use its effect. Uh, then we have one Vernisilf for the Flourishing Hills. This is technically the worst one. It's like a worst copy of Misting Seedlings, simply because this is level 4 and you'd rather have level 3 non-tuners in your deck. Um, and then two Vernisil for the Flowering Fields. This is the same as the other ones where you discard it in another card. It reborns and then it adds an Earth back from your deck to, uh, sorry, from your graveyard to your hand. So this is how you notoriously bamboo shoot people both side, but also it's just a good extender. 
Triple Small World, Triple Clearer Reese Map, One for One, Double Foolish Barrio Goods, Called by the Grave, Harpers Feather Destiny. On to the side, we're playing Triple Evenly, Triple Nibiru, Double Bell, for our going second cards. Should probably sort this out a little bit. I was trying to sort this out beforehand. Um, but yeah, these these were all good in tandem. Like, I kind of wanted to play Cosmic Cycline, but I also wanted to play a bunch of trap cards. So I figured, like, having an 8 7 split of going first and going second cards was good enough. Uh, one Bamboo Shoot, Triple Judgment, and Triple Gozen Match. And then for the extra deck, we're playing one Nat Beast, one Barkion, one Landois, one Barone, one Scrap Dragon. Scrap Dragon's here because if you use Verna Self Effects, you still want to clear the field. So you can, like, Scrap Dragon pop your Sacred Tree and then clear your opponent's things. And also, you do get a level 7 monster and a level 1 tuner quite often, so Scrap Dragon's quite easily accessible. Two following targets, one Garura, one Dragostophelia, one Earth Golem out of Mister, one Starving Den of Fusion Dragon, one Mad Dragon of the Swamp, and one Steven Trifonovsky, the Pride of Black Dragon. Uh, and then one Mrs. Radiant, one Orsa the Earth Charmer, one Nightmare Unicorn, and one Access Code Talker rounding out the entire deck. If you guys want to see replays with this deck, let's get this video up to like 15 likes and I'll post some replays from the tournament and show you guys how I actually played the deck. Honestly, I think this deck is absolutely incredible. When the Ashizu stuff drops, uh, we'll be making some changes. A lot of the hand traps will come out of the deck simply because we want cards that will get more values, such as, you know, the Ashizu cards. And also some of the Ashizu cards are Earth Fairies, which means you can shoot at them off of Venusaur for the Mercy Ceilings, which is absolutely absurd. Um, so you can get like the DD Crow effects and stuff, which is really, really good. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry I don't upload much, but hopefully this makes up for it. I hope you have a wonderful and fantastic day. It's been your boy, Ben Gregson, or Dilemma here, signing out.